Hello, my name is Sally Warren. I work at Paradigm with my colleague Joe Giles, and together we've written a report called Don't Ever Call Us Unskilled Again. And the report is about learning from the experience of support workers during COVID-19. Before we start reading you the report, we just want to say a huge thank you to Dr. Christina Swarbenland of the University of Bedfordshire and to David Tal from the Centre for Inclusive Futures for their support and incredible patience as we wrote this report. We'd also like to thank Get A Life, Generate, Alden Born Trust and Joyce Support for some financial help in producing this report. In the recording, you'll notice that we say quote, um, and when we say quote, that means we're reading from the report a direct quote from a support worker. The forward. Over the last five years, myself and Jo from Paradigm have focused a lot of our time on raising the profile of what good support looks like in society, particularly for people with a learning disability and or autism. Good stuff happens in social care every day. Here at Paradigm, we've co-created with self-advocates, families and supporters, the Great Support Movement, to connect support workers across the UK to share, learn, celebrate the work they do and elevate their profile. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought all of this into extreme focus. As lockdown was implemented, we noticed an increase in activity in the movement, with support workers seeking peer support and sharing how they were coping as the crisis hit. It's these support workers who motivated us to create a qualitative survey that would capture their experiences and learning during the COVID crisis, and importantly, to use these to guide and embed the best in future practice. This report brings together what we've seen and heard from over 118 members of the movement and some beyond the movement. These support workers work with people who have a learning disability and or autism, most of the support represented in this survey relates to people living at in their family homes, their own homes or in small shared homes. Social care includes care homes too, but it's so much more than that. As well as where people live, social care touches other parts of people's lives that can enrich us all. Employment, relationships, education, being in and part of the local community. It's time to rethink social care, to emphasise the social, and why that's so important. Dictionary.com says social means seeking or enjoying the company of others, friendly, sociable, gregarious, living or disposed to live in companionship with others or in a community rather than isolation. These hidden workers have been on the front line during the pandemic and their stories are a moving expression of how support workers have stepped up, flexed up and adapted to the COVID crisis. These support workers' determination has made a huge difference. They embody the spirit of what good support should always look like and feel like, working alongside people to have good lives in settled times and during pandemics. We've learned so much from engaging with and listening to these support workers we are holding up their words as a powerful testament to what is possible and what should be done as we emerge from the world's first major pandemic for nearly 100 years. We have, we have hope. We have each other. We have good people working in social care. Let's build on this together, alongside people who are supported and the social care system itself, to keep doing what works, embed the newly discovered ways of working and getting rid of what just doesn't work. Quote, when the crisis hit, it was the low paid people we relied on, not the rich or famous. We need to learn about what is important. PPE stocks need to be maintained. Investment into care and NHS systems continued. A pay scale which represents the role, not one that represents the interest society wishes to pay to a hidden industry. End quote. Introduction. This report is based on the responses from the Great Sport COVID-19 Snapshot Survey, which invited support workers across the country to capture their experiences, thoughts, ideas, and learning during the pandemic, and to share these with the nation. 
The report shares with you how support workers responded during the pandemic with thoughtfulness, creativity and dedication. It shares some key messages and must-haves for moving forward beyond the pandemic. And it also shares the plea of support workers to be valued and recognised as essential and highly skilled members of the social care workforce, not just now, but as society moves forward. We want to give a voice to support workers who don't generally get the opportunity to tell their story. We wanted to give them a platform to do this. Quote, as per usual, support workers have a vital voice. They have proven to be highly skilled, caring, kind and resourceful. Powers that be must continue to listen and encourage more creative ways of support and value the role. End quote. Context. For many years, social care has been underinvested in, undervalued and invisible to many. Many members of the public are unaware of the importance of social care and how it's a lifeline to millions of people across the UK from the moment of birth to the moment of death. This invisibility of social care amongst the general public has meant that horrific cuts to services and budgets have been largely unnoticed and unchallenged. Even some of our members of parliament have assumed social care as part of the NHS and free. Neither of these are true. This has led to its amazing workforce that includes support workers and personal assistants, that's people employed by directly an individual or their family to support them, being overlooked, underpaid, unappreciated, and even referred to by senior ministers in the government as unskilled. And then the pandemic happened. What we've witnessed during this unprecedented time is social care being treated as an afterthought. Moments of real disconnect when support workers were initially overlooked, they're then eventually seen as key workers who were highly valued, who kept the country functioning, and then encouraged to get a care badge. There's been no additional investment in social care to keep functioning and moving forward. The Prime Minister suggesting that providers of care were in some way to blame for the high numbers of deaths. And support workers offering highly skilled and innovative support in incredibly challenging times, whilst being conscious of the risk to themselves and their loved ones. Quote, do we value social care? End quote. In total, the number of people working in care and support is estimated to be in a region of 1.5 million. It's the largest workforce in the UK. A large number of these people work in more traditional settings, offering care to people in care homes, often supporting older people. It's worth noting that much of the media during the pandemic has referred to care workers and represented social care in one way, in one dimension. Large care homes, group homes for older people. This report focuses on the smaller proportion, the smaller number of this workforce who are support workers, working alongside adults with a learning disability and or autism, of whom there are about 1.5 million in the UK. Words really matter here. Support workers have a significantly different role to that of a care worker. The role of a support worker is to support people to live, work and thrive in their community as equal citizens. This includes, where required, being skilled at supporting people with complex disabilities who may have unique communication styles and a range of behaviours communicating their emotions. Support workers who responded to our survey typically supported individuals in their own home, where they live on their own or with a small number of people, or at their parents' home. The support offered can range from checking in occasionally, working a few hours a week offering support, or offering 24 hours support seven days a week. Over the past decade, support workers have told us that their role is often misunderstood and in danger with the cuts to budgets leading to less time with individuals of becoming a solely task oriented role, rather than a role that supports people to live good ordinary lives. Examples of auction sites for commissioning support and the dreaded 15 minute care visits emerged. These are not fit for purpose for individuals, their families or the workforce. It's a national scandal that people with a learning disability experience greater ill health and die on average 
15 to 20 years sooner than the general population. In June 2020, Chris Hatton's blog highlighted statistics, numbers, relating to the peak of the pandemic and reported that in the general population, less than 40% of weekly deaths were attributed to COVID-19. For people with a learning disability, it was approaching 70% of people's deaths were attributed to COVID-19. We are still learning about the full impact of the virus, particularly on those with a learning disability and or autism. Reports are revealing that people are more likely to get ill and possibly die from COVID-19 when they live in larger settings. Smaller settings are safer. This data must be considered when decisions being made about the prioritization, prior, prioritization of testing. Care homes have hit the news and the rest of the social care sector has been excluded from guidance and easy access to testing. A public inquiry is needed to understand how many of these deaths were avoidable and no doubt due to pressures across the health and social care sector. Of the people who replied, 73% were support workers, people employed by organisations to offer support. 5% were personal assistants, people employed directly by an individual to provide some of their care and support. And 22% were team managers or team leaders who directly manage teams of support workers and also offer direct support. Reflecting on the pandemic means being honest about the challenges, celebrating what went well and learning. Quote, we have helped each other cope with a lot of fear and anxieties due to the situation. And these are further stressed with the worry of the people we support contracting COVID-19. I am proud of myself and my colleagues for keeping on going with our role and trying to make this time as enjoyable for the people we support as possible. End quote. The challenges. Six months ago, many of us wouldn't have believed that a worldwide pandemic would change our lives so dramatically. Being hit with an abrupt lockdown across society is inevitably going to cause harsh challenges and confusion. Quote, it's impossible to know what will happen. All the preparations in the world can't foresee what an autistic adult will do or how they will cope when their world and routines are stopped or changed." End quote. People found it hard not having clear and timely guidelines to inform the way they should support individuals to keep everyone safe and well. 58% of the people who replied to the survey were confused by the messages from the government. There was an appreciation of employers trying to provide guidance promptly but this proved difficult as the government and in turn local authorities were not providing what they needed to do this. When the information was eventually produced, support workers spoke of the difficulties in knowing where to find it. They wanted to be confident they were using the most up-to-date guidance. Part of the challenge was that this information changed on a weekly, if not daily, basis. Support workers wanted to be able to explain what was happening to those they support. And there was a real challenge as the government didn't provide easy read information at timely points, along with the regular updates. They spoke of the mishandling of social care when the government released people from hospital back home without being tested for the virus. Staff spoke of their real worry and fear of the virus being spread to others who shared their home, as well as them and their colleagues. Tests weren't available to people living and working in supported living settings. They highlighted their extreme concern at being held responsible for any spread. There was a lack of faith and anger at the government's response and annoyance at the poor investment in social care. Quote, I believe the government's response has been totally incompetent and negligent, leading to the unnecessary death of thousands of people. End quote. Many families suddenly lost support workers who had been previously supporting them on a weekly or daily basis at home. Families who rely on these support workers. The pause in their support 
continued for these families throughout the whole of lockdown. And for many, as we write this, this pause still remains. Quote, also, amazing shout out to the families who have lost their PAs during this time and are doing their best, end quote. For support workers who were part of an organisation, one challenge was ensuring that, as much as possible, there was a consistent team supporting a person. That is the same people regularly supporting a person. Having fewer staff coming and going from a small shared house or flat or an individual's home made it easier to minimise the risk of infection. Quote, Supporting someone who lives independently has made it possible to keep her risk minimal and ours. We've created a small bubble of interaction. In a large residential setting, the risk and ability to keep her safe would have been scarily high. With high levels of staff isolating, there was a real challenge leading to people working extra shifts, sometimes with people they didn't know. Support workers talked about being exhausted and needing a break. The nation heard about the challenge of getting the right personal protective equipment, or PPE. Unsurprisingly, this was raised as a real concern by a number of support workers who said that not only were they short of PPE at times, but clear guidelines on how to use it were not provided. This is a challenge for those who don't typically use PPE in their roles. Support workers worked hard to help people maintain as much independence outdoors as possible, but the behaviour of others in the community not following the government guidance led to confusion and worry for some of the people they supported and for the support workers themselves. There was a real frustration from support workers about the fact it was so hard to get grocery delivery slots. It became clear that whilst registered care homes were on a priority list with all the supermarkets, people living in supported li living settings where they have their own tenancy on their own or with housemates and receive the support they require to live full lives have been completely overlooked. This created further stress and anxiety for the workers as it meant that stretched support workers were also having to go into supermarkets. Support workers spoke about the challenges of the direct impact on those they support. People really struggled to understand why they couldn't see their family and friends, the changing rules on social distancing and all the uncertainty. People also started to lose some of the skills they have developed over the years, for example, going to the shop and traveling independently. An additional challenge was accessing resources and activities that match the interests, skills and ability of each person. Quote, the people we support are quite independent and they don't want to do some of the things that have been, have, that have been made available as they seem immature. End quote. During the pandemic, it felt like everyone moved into the world of Zoom and WhatsApp, and this presented a real challenge for many people with a learning disability and or autism. Many just didn't have access to suitable mobiles, tablets, computers, apps, or access to Wi-Fi and the money to pay for the data. Many didn't have the skills to be able to use them if they were available. The challenge of support workers was not only to find the resources people needed to connect, but to make the time to be alongside people and using them. In a time of high staff sickness, shortages of staff and changing priorities in their roles, finding this time wasn't always easy. A few support workers were disappointed that senior colleagues didn't fully comprehend the realities of their day-to-day -day work. And this didn't reassure them in their demanding role. One support worker described their managers as managers leaving the premises like rats on a sinking ship. Support workers found it difficult not being able to spend time with their peers beyond the limited formal team meetings. This alongside minimum supervision for some led to some support workers feeling isolated. They would have valued time to reflect, learn together, reassure and support each other. Working under these severe pressures, support workers were aware that some of their colleagues had been furloughed. Receiving 80% of their pay alongside other entitlements, for example accruing annual leave. This felt unfair when they were working often extra shifts and in risky situations without any bonus, additional leave or hazard pay. 
Rising to the challenges. Quote, dedicated staff and management teams carried on even though the world stood still around them. End quote. Do you remember how you felt, the raw emotions you experienced and the sense of vulnerability when we were told the whole country was going into lockdown overnight? When we could potentially be exposed to a virus that would threaten our lives and the lives of those we love? Support workers told us of the fear and anxiety they felt for themselves and their loved ones. The fact is they still had to go into work and couldn't lock down in the way that many of the population did. At a time when leaders or managers of organisations were working out almost overnight what the way of working needed to be during this time and, and adapting policies and guidelines in line with this, support workers were there directly alongside people with a learning disability and or autism. They were helping people manage their fears and anxieties, finding their way through difficult changes to routines for individuals and groups of people supporting people to withdraw in a sensitive way from physically seeing and being with their family and friends. All of this whilst trying to work out how to keep people coronavirus free and emotionally well. It's important to remember that whilst the people being supported would have experienced a whole range of emotions just like anyone else, due to the nature of their learning disability and or autism, many found compre comprehending and adjusting to these pressures profoundly difficult and challenging. Support workers showed acute skill, innovation, resilience and dedication to individuals at this time. The depth, range and nuance of skills required to navigate all of the above is quite astounding. Sadly, much of this still remains largely unnoticed in society. But support workers noticed it. They were proud of their skills and as one support worker describes here, quote, Support workers don't just clean, dress, feed and medicate. They support people to live their lives, to understand what's happening around them, to live as independently as they possibly can, including learning and trying together with the people they are supporting, new skills and adventures. They have fun with the people they're supporting and they make connections and they are dedicated and professional in what they do." End quote. Support workers spoke with pride about how they had developed new ways to help people stay connected with those they love and care about. In many ways, people's worlds opened up and new connections were made as a result of the many opportunities that support workers and self-advocates made possible. These virtual connections via WhatsApp and Zoom connected families, friends and new people across the country. Whether it be an online chat, a coronavirus briefing, a Zumba class or quizzes, support workers worked alongside people to create these possibilities. This often involved support workers having to advocate on behalf of people to ensure they, they could get Wi-Fi and access to the IT resources, the tablets, computers and the necessary apps or programmes. Quote, my most proud moment? When I managed to get a three-way WhatsApp video with two people I support, it was the first time in a couple of months they had seen someone else from the day centre. End quote. Support workers described the skilled way in which they involved and walked alongside the people they were supporting, helping them understand the ever-changing restrictions of lockdown and their worlds. People used easy read information when they could find it, but also skillfully broke down the information they were being given in a way that the people they support could understand. Support workers also use their skill and knowledge of individuals to notice how individuals communicated confusion, anxiety or distress non-verbally and responded to this in a way that offered reassurance and understanding. A number of people responding to the survey spoke of their great pride and relief at the fact that the people they supported hadn't contracted coronavirus and that this was due in part to them learning and implementing protocols, that's guidelines, that prevented transmission. One person drew attention to the fact that their organisation avoided using agency staff to ensure a consistent team wrapped around the people they support to reduce the risk of infection. Nearly 70% of support workers felt that knowing how important their work was in ensuring people stayed well really helped them during this time. 
Whilst one person said that this pandemic highlighted those that really just do the job for the money, the overwhelming story was the sense of skill and commitment that support workers had to their role and their pride in being there. Quote, I'm most proud of still making sure I turned up to do my job with a smile and a brave face, no matter how much fear I may carry with me. End quote. Numerous people spoke with great enthusiasm about the team spirit amongst staff that helped them find ways of getting through this pressured time. It helped them work through their own fears, grow resilience together, cope with change, minimise transmission of the virus, and know when and where extra support was needed. It also generated some unexpected creative thinking in a time of crisis. With a few strong exceptions, support workers felt well supported and proud of their organisations. Quote, my boss has coped remarkably well due to the team being so close. End quote. About a third of the people who replied talked about the remarkable creativity that showed through the way they supported each other's during lockdown. During this time, support workers helped people connect through new mediums, created activities such as craft activity packs, delivered food, created online quizzes, and supported people to maintain as much independence as possible, all whilst having ongoing conversations about what was going on with the pandemic. It's important to consider here that when support workers worked alongside people to do all of the above, they had to be mindful and skilled at the fact that they, the people they were supporting had a range of abilities and interests. For example, what might be accessible to one person might be childlike to another. This really highlights the importance of developing a relationship with the person you support that ensures a deep understanding of who they are, what they need, what they enjoy, and how they communicate this. Quote, my colleagues have been outstanding in their approach, showing a willingness to adapt and think outside the box to provide service and calmness that our clients need or needed, unquote. Support workers felt a sense of freedom, empowerment and pride in being able to work this way. Quote, we are professionals who have lots to offer. Support our creativity and let us use it. Ultimately, pay us what we're actually worth, end quote. There was a sense of pride that before the pandemic, rules, policies and regulations overly restricted the way people offered support and often overshadowed the more natural and creative ways of being. Quote, often managers that are not on the front line forget what it's about and are governed by their policies. Sometimes I think it needs reminding that they need to step outside the box and let it all go a little bit wild, end quote. Over the last decade or so, there have been huge cuts to social care budgets, leading to many support workers having less time with those they support and being under tremendous pressure to focus on tasks to be completed. The different way in which support workers spent time with those they support during the pandemic enabled them to experience the ups and downs of relationships which opened up new knowledge, capacities, interests, and new possibilities to try. Whilst it was an extremely stressful time, respondents clearly enjoyed growing their relationships with those they support during lockdown and being trusted to respond in a way that was right for each individual. It was an opportunity to bring the whole selves to work. Quote, I'm most proud of just being me and the opportunities offered in terms of creativity and actions that might not have happened, end quote. Support workers also reached out across the country to connect with and share their experiences with other support workers. Quote, I have loved interacting with other organisations and the people they support through the Great Support Network in particular, especially the Great Chat and Brews, end quote. All of this must be read within the context of how local communities reacted in this challenging time. Members of the community volunteered their time and support spontaneously to help with shopping, being part of online video calls and showing random acts of kindness. This kindness was welcomed and in contrast to times before when police checks, DBS checks or heavy risk assessments would have delayed this offer of assistance, support workers embraced how their community naturally 
and spontaneously came together. Quote, let's keep the community spirit at the front of our thoughts, as this is what gets us through difficult times. End quote. Valuing the skilled role of a support worker. Quote, please don't just value key workers during a pandemic. They should always be valued and respected, not just by the public, but by the government, end quote. In February 2020, a government cabinet member, Priti Patel, described care workers as unskilled. At workshops that Paradigm was facilitating during this time, support workers vented their anger, resentment and sense of injustice at this. They felt it gave society a misrepresentation and incorrect understanding of the complexity of their roles as support workers and that of their colleagues. There was further insult to injury when Matt Hancock, the Secretary of State for Health and Social Care, thought it was a good idea to offer care workers a green care badge, one that each person would have to pay for. Support workers found this offensive. Quote, no stupid badge, end quote. Whilst NHS staff were the focus of attention and appreciation throughout the pandemic, it took a number of months before those working in social care were recognised and valued. And even then, it only really referred to people working in care homes supporting older people. Many support workers spoke of their pride at being seen as key workers who kept the country going. Quote, I'm most proud of being recognised as an integral part of our care and support structure. Presently, it only appears that the NHS are recognised carers, but support workers who are working just as hard with vulnerable clients who may lack capacity and are challenging seems to be, seem to be the unsung heroes and unrecognised. Support workers and PAs should be financially rewarded with a decent pay band and increase. End quote. Quote. The job is hard, but we're willing to get on with it. We need to be seen on a par with the NHS, not seen as a burden, end quote. Support workers appreciated how society was trying to support them by allowing them to jump queues in supermarkets and shops and being clapped on a Thursday evening. But they were very clear that clapping just wasn't enough. Support workers are a workforce that are notoriously underpaid. It's hardly surprising that a third of the people who replied spoke of their wages being too low and not reflecting the range of skills and dedication that their roles require. Quote, whilst we do the job because we care, support workers are among the lowest paid workers we have on the front line during the crisis and wages should reflect the responsibility we take on. So wages need to be higher, end quote. Quote, we urgently need to pay social care workers better. This is a vocation and we should all unionise and fight for financial recognition, end quote. In connection with pay, support workers spoke of the need to acknowledge the extreme circumstances the pandemic threw them into. They felt that this should be acknowledged with bonuses, hazard pay, additional leave or a one-off reward. In addition to this, there was a recognition for there to be investment in emotional and mental health support. Quote, I feel some have struggled in some ways, but have dealt with this by talking to staff and, ment and mental health support people. End quote. Quote, it would be good for companies to focus on creating and maintaining a great staff team that work hard, but also feel valued. Also, I think it would be good to take forward a focus on supporting everyone, including people we support and staff, with mental health struggles, which will have developed or worsened due to the pandemic. Moving forward, everyone will need a lot of support to develop as life continues to change again. Having access to training beyond the minimum to develop their skills, competencies and leadership abilities with a view to furthering their career was considered to be another way to show value to the workforce. Quote, people work hard in this job and you take out as much as you put in. The right companies will offer good training and opportunities to work your way up through the company, 
end quote. The diverse range of skills and commitment demonstrated in the survey response highlights how important it is for society and the government to truly value the complex and professional role of support workers within social care. We must lift the voice and presence of support workers and social care, which are too often unnoticed and taken for granted. Quote, people who offer their time, energy and attention to help vulnerable others are an asset to society and should be valued as such. Let's see a shift away from viewing social care as a tiresome drain of resources to viewing it as a valued and essential part of society. Key messages in responding to the pandemic. Message one. Supported living settings need clear, timely guidance. Clear guidance for those with a learning disability and or autism living on their own or in a shared home with support, known as supported living, is urgently required in order for people to be supported out of lockdown and in preparation for a possible second wave. The journalist Saba Salman, in an article in The Independent on the 14th of July 2020, said, the government's guidance on coronavirus for supported living settings has been under development since mid-May, in contrast to care home guidance published three months ago and already updated at least once. Easy read information must also be published alongside any public announcement giving guidelines. These must be made available in a central place. People with a learning disability and autism watch the news as well. Message two, coronavirus tests must be available in supported living settings. Coronavirus tests must be easily available for all those living and working in supported living settings. Message three, support each person out of lockdown in the way that is right for them. Carefully consider how each person comes out of lockdown with the person themselves and those that are important to them. This must be done in a way that keeps each person as safe as possible, but also in a way that maximizes their independence, autonomy, understanding and freedom. There is no one size fits all way of achieving this. Commissioners must work alongside providers to ensure the necessary resources are available. Message four, recognize and support the essential role of support workers at this time. Agree how you will ensure support workers are able to recover and rebuild their energy, particularly considering a potential second wave may occur. This should include various forms of enhanced conditions, such as additional leave and or hazard or bonus pay. It's also important to consider supporting people with their emotional well-being, offering reflective supervision and time with peers for informal connections and support. Message five. Recognise and support the role of families and unpaid carers. Ensure that plans are in place to support families, many of whom have been caring full time for their loved ones due to reductions in support during lockdown. This support for families must be ongoing, but needs additional consideration and actions as we ease out of lockdown. Many families will need respite, support plans and resources in place as we prepare for a potential second wave. Message six, society needs to act responsibly as lockdown eases. One of the most common messages from support workers was for the rest of society to adhere to guidance and respect the social distancing rules. Quote, please don't take for granted that things are improving and relax the standards that have helped us get to this point. There are still so many people who are vulnerable and now is not the time to get lazy or they could suffer further, end quote. Message seven, keep on building the community spirit. We must nurture the spontaneous and genuine natural connections with families, friends and the wider community that have been created during this time. They are key to ensuring that people are valued citizens in their community. Message eight, getting ready for a possible second wave. Government, regulators, commissioners, organisations and employers must stock up on PPE. Ensure that contingency and crisis plans are co-produced 
with self-advocates, families and support workers and communicated clearly. They must make sure that clear policies and procedures for staff are in place, communicated and understood. They need to fund and develop the necessary training, including leadership training, offer reflective supervision and facilitate opportunities for peer support. And they should establish relationships with local businesses such as supermarkets to ensure that priority food slots can be given to all those who receive support, not just those in residential care homes. Moving forward, a plea. Support and grow the good work, the passion and determination that already exists in social care. Make this the expectation and experience across the UK. Quote, we have an opportunity for serious social change, so decide on what society should mean and aim to achieve it. End quote. Must have one, value and invest in social care. It's a mindset. Don't undervalue social care or see it as the poor relation to the NHS. Millions of citizens in the UK need support to live their lives. As one support worker sharply observed, quote, support social care. You may not need it now, but the day will come when you or somebody you love will. The health of a nation can be measured by its level of support offered to those in need. Let's be the best we can be. End quote. With such severe cuts to funding for over a decade, social care is on its knees. Many families who are supporting their loved ones are also exhausted. At its worst, social care has become little more than a threadbare safety net. In politicshome.com on the 14th of July 2020, Sir Andrew Dilnot wrote, In all kinds of ways, we have a system that doesn't work that doesn't look after the people who need it well, that doesn't look after the people providing the care well. The incredible response we have seen during the pandemic is simply not sustainable unless more investment is made. Must have two. Ensure people have a place to live, which really means home, as you and we experience our homes. Governments, working alongside regulators, must value the fundamental differences between care homes, residential homes and supported living. The more choice and autonomy people have, the better. We must all commit to ensuring a future where people with a learning disability and or autism are supported to live in small shared houses or on their own, rather than in large residential settings. This pandemic has highlighted that people are safer when they live in their own home or share their home with just a few other people of their choice, with a consistent team supporting them. Must have three. Support people to regain and experience flourishing lives. At a time when people with a learning disability and or autism have had to pause aspects of their lives, support workers are aware that some people may need focused support to regain these skills that are essential for their independence. Fundamental things like being able to shop, cook, meet up with friends and travel independently create possibilities and a sense of pride of self and value in life. As we say in the Practical Guide to the REACH standards, if we do not stay strong, questioning and determined to do this, people will be denied their human rights. It's a dangerously slippery slope. Quote, having to work remotely at very short notice and never having done this before, it would have been great to get more guidance on software packages instead of just being thrown at the deep end. Nine weeks in and I'm still learning how they work. I have been left feeling very inadequate in terms of my knowledge. There was an assumption that everyone knew all these things already, end quote. It's important to note here as well that we've referenced Flourishing Lives and Dr. Sarah Ryan is currently working on a project, a research project called Bridging the Translation Gap between learning disability policy and practice in search of flourishing lives. Must have four, increase the pay of support workers. The pay of support workers must increase to reflect their highly skilled, complex and diverse roles. Lack of local authority funding has driven down salaries to the point where other sectors outcompete social care as a career choice, 
when they are looking at pay alone. Social care is fundamentally about relationships, trust, spending time alongside people, being motivated and making a difference. Support workers must be recognised and rewarded as principal key workers. A national support worker scale which pays people a salary which reflects their training and expertise is needed now. Quote, we'll look back and see the response of frontline workers stepping up and doing what they always do. This should be recognised and acknowledged. End quote. Must have five. Harness that natural creativity. Regulators and organisations need to work with support workers to minimise the restrictions that limit creativity. During lockdown, many support workers were reconnected with the soul of their work to be in relationships with individuals and figure out together how to make the best of life. This creativity must continue. Quote, we should remember that we can do things differently and we should continue to be as creative as we are being now, end quote. Must have six, lift the voice of support workers. Shout it from the rooftops. The profile of support workers must be understood and broadcast across society to ensure their role is seen and valued. This must include support workers being fully involved in shaping support and services alongside families, self-advocates and management. Quote, it's taken a pandemic for the general public to realise the contribution we are making on a daily basis, caring for vulnerable adults before, during and after the pandemic. It's a privilege to work in health and social care. End quote. Finally, we say thank you, support workers. Be proud of your role and what you have achieved. Look after yourselves. Let people know what you need to stay healthy and well. And use your voice. Share your insights, creativity and ideas with your colleagues, your managers and peers around the country and beyond. Thank you, support workers. <laughs>